and action. Okay, everybody. George had a question tonight, and it was about elbow swelling. And I'll see if I can make that picture appear right now. Pow! So if you noticed his elbow, there was a little bump at the bottom of it. And that is termed olecranon bursitis. Uh, I'll try to explain it in easy terms. Whenever you have a joint, whether it's this joint, this joint, uh, the shoulder joint, there's always going to be an edge that muscle has to traverse across. That's the way a joint works. You have two bones that move, and you have a muscle that goes across, and if the muscle contracts, the joint moves, whether it's on the extension side or the flexion side. So those muscles are delicate. The bones are usually kind of rough. Uh, has uh, best as the human body can lubricate bones, the friction is always going to be there. So you have these things between the the joint, uh, the, between the bone and the soft muscle on top. You have these little sacs of fluid called bursa, and a bursa is essentially a, a very flattened, almost like a balloon that has a little bit of water in it. You can kind of move it around. If there's a little drop of oil or water inside of it. Uh, and it won't stick. It'll, it'll be uh, very pliable, very slippery. Well, imagine if between the bone and between that muscle you have a little sack of fluid that's flattened and it lubricates. It's very lubricated and stays that way for 80 years. Well, you'll never have any friction. So, uh, human body works great, right? Well, sometimes, those of us, especially with an elbow, will have irritation like laying it on a car uh, exterior or the window. So sometimes you'll have that, sometimes you'll have it on a, a desk where you're lying down or you're keeping your elbows down and you're trying to type away. Or other things where you just might unintentionally bump it. Well, those are traumas and usually with enough significant tiny traumas, we're not talking about a big elbow hit, but just enough significant tiny traumas and rubbing throughout the day, you'll have persistent irritation. And with persistent irritation, the body's going to react. The body will react by sending more fluid to that tiny sack of fluid that is flattened. Well, when it senses there's uh, irritation or friction, you'll have enlargement of the sack. And usually, it'll enlarge so much that it won't fit in its usual nice, neat space anymore. And that's when you have that protrusion. Again, I'll put the picture right here. And you saw the protrusion underneath. Now, George's swelling wasn't that bad. Uh, I've seen guys who come in and they actually have like a softball-sized elbow, almost like it's hanging out like a big, like a big growth. And it's a little worrisome. You always have to worry that it might be infected. In George's case, it's not swollen. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not red. It wasn't hot. It was just slightly swollen. And he did not have any trauma, which is the usual case. No obvious trauma. It just grows out of nowhere. Well, if there is some minor relative trauma, we stay away from the trauma. And technically, when you have swelling, this squeeze effect could be trauma too, because you're stretching out that bursa again. So we want to keep it somewhat supple without having hyperflexion, and hopefully with ice, anti-inflammatories, maybe a little turmeric. Sometimes we'll do uh, an injection if we can't bring the swelling down and it's too painful. I'll take fluid out to decompress the area, wrap it up so it doesn't accumulate again maybe drop some steroid inside. So if there is a hot swollen joint and it's red, we never want to penetrate with a needle. We treat it as an infection. Sometimes you'll have a little scratch or a scab and that'll be the portal for bacteria to get on in and usually it'll stick or stay in those little sacs of fluid called the bursa. Once that bacteria gets into the synovium or the joint, that's a problem. And I guess that's a built-in mechanism. It stops bacteria from going all the way in. So you can sacrifice a bursa. You don't want the synovium or the joint lining to be irritated or infected. Uh, in some cases, medical disease can cause this too, like rheumatoid arthritis or more commonly gout. So in George's case, he didn't have an excessive amount of alcohol uh, the nights before, the week before. Uh, we didn't really go through a holiday, so there was no feasting. And he hasn't had any changes in eating habit and no previous history in himself or the family with regards to gout. So I did a blood test, but the true way to get uh, a gout diagnosis is to pull fluid out and see birefringent crystals on a microscope. 
Um, but it doesn't matter. I would still treat with anti-inflammatories. So there are some herbal ways, but truthfully, in this case, I would go new school, which means prescription medicines, maybe even steroids, if it's that bad and we want to bring down the swelling quick. And then the external applications of cold compression. I, I, I'm holding it like this. I actually meant to be like this. Cold compression, decreased ac activity, uh, staying hydrated. So usually those are the treatments of choice. An x-ray is going to be done. George will see what it shows. I probably will see a little spur, but that's about it. I'm not going to work on or operate on a spur because it's probably been there for years. I bet you it was an unintentional hit, which is easy to resolve. Now, if this keeps on coming back at, uh, several times over the next couple of years, then we need more intervention and an investigation on exactly what he's doing at home or at work. So hopefully this helps. Good question, George. Subscribe to me for more questions on Dr. Rick's Minute Clinic.